Following Premier David Makura's State of the Province address, this month, MEC for Finance Barbara Creasy allocated the budget speech for the 2016-2017 fiscal year. Hello and welcome to this episode of Eye on Gaudeng. I'm Kukule Tukele. We're coming to you live from the business and financial district of the province of Gaudeng in Santon, also known as the richest square mile on the African continent. In this episode, we'll be focusing on the key highlights from MEC Creasy's budget speech. The Gauteng Provincial Government faces a tough year ahead with the sluggish economy and budget cuts. The budget this year totals 103 billion rand, with national government contributing 95% of this. MEC for Finance within the province of Gauteng, Barbara Creasy, thank you so much for your time today, ma'am. You've certainly had a very challenging job in tabling out the uh, budget for the next fiscal year, given the uh, macroeconomic conditions that overall the economy is facing. But if we do look at the growth trajectory for the Gauteng province economically, it does seem as though it is under strain slightly over the next few years. In your opinion, given the positive uh, elements that you've alluded to regarding demographics and such, how best can we navigate this landscape in order to increase economic growth in the province? Well, I, I think that we are hoping that over the next three years we will see moderate growth in the province to about 2.8%. Obviously, that does mean that we need to invest more in infrastructure um, we have to prioritise the skills of our citizens. We've got to look at further reducing red tape, length of time for environmental impact, development applications, ease the cost of, of doing business. I think all, all of those things are important, but what is in also important is the Premier's 10-pillar programme of modernisation, transformation and reindustrialisation. And I think that what the Premier has encouraged us to think about is firstly ways in which we can stimulate Gauteng's economy. We already know that 40% of the services sector is here in our province. There, there is still potential to grow the services sector not only in the province but also to grow Gauteng as a, a leading service sector provider across the continent of Africa. We are interested in transforming our manufacturing industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we already know that, that there are some key sectors. Uh, for example, the manufacture of mining equipment that allows us to leverage on our historical past and the particular skill set and know-how that we have, but also provides opportunities for growth on the African continent. 13% um, of our trade involves the sale of manufactured goods on the African continent, um, in, in particular uh, mining manufacturing equipment. Um, what's also important is the investment that we're making in the transport sector, in our road infrastructure. Uh, we obviously want to have better linkages uh, we've got fairly good north-south linkages. We're interested in east-west linkages, um, upgrading of, we've just finished a major upgrade of the N12 that, that opens up the, the, the western part of the country. Mm -hmm. um, I think that skills, the development of young people and their skill sets, uh, education is our, our biggest budget. We're spending 39 billion. Um, we are seeing improvements in outputs uh, of our education system. 60% of adults in this province have a post-school qualification. We are also seeing a situation where last year 77% of those who started school in 2004 wrote matric last year. So our flow through is improving. We got 38,000 university entrants amongst our matriculants. Uh, but what's also important is the money that we're investing in post-school. Uh, it's a very topical uh, issue at the moment. It's not our key area of responsibility, but because we understand the linkage between skilled labor force, skilled workforce and economic growth, 
Uh, we think it's very important to invest, as we are, almost 1.7 billion every year in post-school education and training aimed at, at uh, younger people in this province. You clearly take care of a very important economy uh, when it comes to the continental context of things. It's been said that if uh, Gauteng was its own country, it would probably rank as number four or five as the biggest economies on the continent. Having said this, if South Africa does see a potential credit rating downgrade, how severe would the impact be on the Gauteng government as well as uh, the budget in particular? Well, I suppose the first thing that we've all got to do is, is put our collective effort, uh, whether we are in government or business or civil society, to making sure that we don't have the credit rating downgrade. Uh, and obviously, even if that eventuality were to come about, what is important is to have mechanisms to, to get out of it as speedily as possible. For me, the a social compact amongst all of the actors, whether it's business, civil society, organized labor, government, all of us need to spend a lot more time around the table. We need to understand the implications of these tough economic times. Mm. We need to develop a common approach to inclusive growth. We need to agree together what we prepare to give and what we prepare to sacrifice. And I believe it's only through building those kind of partnerships that we will be able to prevent the ratings downgrade in the, in the first place, but grow this economy inclusively and sustainably going forward into the future. Education and health remain the main priorities, with the bulk of the spend being afforded to these two sectors. The adoption of smart technology is key to their transformation. My name is Kamahelo and my surname is Mashangwani. I'm doing grade 10 at Bidumelong Secondary School. The tablet is a dehonore, a honahala lore research, a information a loring ribata via the home of the radiator. Kamatlas and Rahono communicate the literature of Blade tablet and smartphone. Go high. How about the details book? We have to get or check out information about that. The challenge is that we are going to go to the library. We are going to get the textbook to eight ten. Camera back. So we are going to go to the library to get the textbook to eight ten. More the staying tablet. Now that we are using these uh, these gadgets, our learners they can search whatever they want from the Wi-Fi internet. Unlike before, where they will have to go to the internet cafe to research and they have to pay money if to go there. Now everything is free. We've just come away from the budget speech for the province of Gauteng and 37.4 billion rand. Again, education and healthcare taking the lion's share of the provincial budget. Are you happy with the funding that's been allocated to you this year? First, I want to congratulate MSC Christie for balancing the very difficult uh, um, uh, environments that we find ourselves in and the fact that she's been able, um, through her department, to find a bit of money uh, to give to difficult departments like my, ourselves and that of, H of education. And I think it's a very commendable, um, very prudential management of our fiscals. And we can only say that, to commit to South Africans, that uh, the money allocated to health we will do everything possible in our power that we stretch the rent even further, we do things matter, and we eliminate any efficiencies in the system. So, of course, and I think we would have had the MEC, despite the, uh, the fiscal constraint that we find ourselves in, one of the things she was able to say eloquently, is that uh, we are still allowed to hire uh, nurses, we are still allowed to hire pharmacists, we are still allowed to hire doctors, and I think that must also give confidence to the citizens that despite the difficult uh, fiscal environment we find ourselves in, we are able to deliver services to the citizens of our province. I'm glad you did touch on skills because certainly your portfolio needs a multi-pronged approach when it comes to sourcing solutions. It's skills, it's the technology, it's the machinery, uh, it's the infrastructure too, which we also understand will be developed going forward. Uh, does this paint a picture as to how the budget is going to be allocated for the next fiscal year? 
I think you would have heard the MEC spoke about, about the 4 billion rents that you must uh, add to the primary health care services. Why primary health care, uh, millions of our citizens, uh, they enter this public service through the, to the clinic, through the community health care centre, um, through a district hospital. And therefore, if we capacitate all our primary health care facilities and have decent um, number of nurses uh, from the numbers that we have now, have availability of medication on time and the basic essential equipment that are needed there and it will continue to build their impetus and make sure that the citizens believe in the system and of course part of the money is going to make sure that we get more doctors um, to be residents in these clinics and we're looking forward really to an improved uh, healthcare service delivery in our province and part of it will be supporting the world-based outreach team that are interfacing between the citizens and the um, and the public healthcare system so that people sometimes are seen at home and they're visited at home and follow-ups are made at home by the community health care workers. MEC, how far have you gone in your progress to ensure that you uh, don't see qualified audit reports under your portfolio going forward? Um, we've been working extremely hard and, and sometimes I feel sorry for, for the officials but I think what needs to be done needs to be done. We have this tag of being um, a department that's under curatorship and, and I think having a qualified audit opinion, um, uh, we've put um, uh, systems in place by making sure that every Friday we have a meeting uh, with all our hospital managers, uh, CEOs as well, as that of uh, people who manages our finances, including the procurement uh, team, as well as just our logistics in general, to deal with the basic things that we had problems with, including the issues of revenue. So the systems are putting in place. I am confident that uh, the end of this financial year, uh, God willing, uh, that we will get a clean audit reports. And it's all systems uh, in our view that we've done everything and responded to the issues that were raised by the Auditor General in the last financial year. And we can only hope for the good news. And I think it will help the, the, the entire provincial government for health to get an unqualified and clean audit report. The recently upgraded Natal Strait Hospital in Ekuruleni, now known as Tele Mohuerane, highlights the vision for the healthcare sector in the province. The hospital benefits the community in that it does have specialists in all the categories of care, from surgical department, internal medicine, obstetrics and gynae, accident and emergencies, and radiology. It will go the state of the art Redux machine that assists us in screening our patients, particularly those that have been involved in car accidents without having them having to go into long queues and wait for radiology services. We've got mammographs, which we didn't have in the past, which helps us diagnose early cancers in women. We've got sonar machines in accident and emergency blood gas units. It has actually helped us to restore the dignity of our patients. <laughs> Welcome back to Eye on Gauteng. In her 2016-2017 budget speech, Gauteng MEC for Finance, Barbara Prisi, highlighted that infrastructure delivery is a key source for fiscal stimulus. This source of fiscal stimulus has the twin objective of creating jobs and improving economic performance and ensuring better living conditions for our people. The Gauteng Provincial Government will spend 41.6 billion over the medium term on infrastructure. Here in the city of Johannesburg, major infrastructure projects are underway, including the rehabilitation of one of the major highways in the province, the M1, which connects the northern and southern areas with the city centre. The condition of these roads have been deteriorating over the years uh, because of uh, lack of investment in the road infrastructure. However, I need to indicate that the city of Johannesburg has committed itself to reinvest into, into the infrastructure through its uh, 100 billion uh, infrastructure investment over the 10 year period. And, and road infrastructure stands to benefit most out of that program. Uh, as part of ensuring that the GRA is ready to implement the road infrastructure developments that are required by the city, we initiated quite a number of uh, processes to make sure that we are ready to implement. So one of it is that we conducted a, con a visual condition assessment on our roads and we now know the extent of the road network. We now know the condition of each of the road uh, uh, 
uh, roads in the city and therefore we know what is needed to make sure that the road infrastructure is in the condition that befits uh, a world-class African city. Uh, subsequent to that we also conducted an assessment on the bridge structures across the city which in total is about 889 and that indicated to us that we need in the region of uh, about 5 billion rands to invest in the bridge inf infrastructure to really address the defects that have been identified through that assessment process. And we have prioritized bridges on the M1 precisely because of the economic role that the road plays uh, in the city of Johannesburg. But there are other bridges that were identified that required upgrades. For instance, in Soweto currently we are busy constructing an Aledi bridge which is linking two communities which were previously separated by the apartheid regime uh, and uh, through which is over a railway line and exposing most of our communities there to a risk of being run down by uh, trains. Service delivery continues to be a main focus of the Gauteng provincial government in order to revitalize township economies. Ndirisano is a community outreach program inviting citizens to actively engage with government on issues of service delivery. Additionally, initiatives such as Bonkekebutu, the province's clean and green campaign, encourages communities to improve and protect their own environments by imparting skills and values. We strive to be the cleanest and greenest province. Uh, we also basically want to ensure that uh, we turn the waste we generate because we are the biggest contributor to waste generation in South Africa. The waste we generate is an industry on its own. We want to turn that waste into an opportunity for creation of employment, especially amongst young people in the townships who are unemployed. Uh, we want to work with the communities to, to turn around the faces of our communities so that all the, the dumpings that is happening in different places, we turn these dumping sites into uh, grounds for, for sports. Uh, we also turn them into parks for community members uh, to have recreation in their communities. So that, that's uh, the, the primary focus of Buntle Kibu to campaign is to mobilize society, mobilize communities across Gauteng uh, and ensure that together we are involved in action. Last year, the Gauteng government announced that it is investing over 1 billion rand in the Gauteng broadband network in order to reach a target of 100% connectivity by 2019. With Johannesburg's executive mayor Park Stow already aligning the city's vision with that of the province, broadband infrastructure was initiated here through a wireless mesh of a Bromfield team offering free Wi-Fi in the area. Uh, we're rolling out uh, uh, smart city initiatives such as uh, a wireless mesh of a Bromfield team so that we're able to cover the, the entire youthful precinct of Johannesburg with the wireless mesh of free Wi-Fi access. We've got free Wi-Fi hotspots throughout the city of Johannesburg that have been rolled out. So it's smart from the point of view of creating access to communities that historically haven't had access. I found out from a friend, a friend just, when I came here, it's like, I was complaining about data, and he's like, why don't you connect to the Wi-Fi? And I'm like, is there free Wi-Fi here? It's like everywhere. And I'm like, okay, cool, let me just connect. And like that, it connected. I only used it used it once so so it was quite it was quite interesting because the speed is actually good and you get like 100 megs uh, a day and then when it finishes <clears throat> you can come the following day again and get 100 megs the speed is quite amazing i can actually update my softwares and uh and everything that i need to do with my phone the speed is good but when you're closer to the offices when you're closer to the bandwidth i think it would be better if they extended the bandwidth you know what i mean the radius so it could be strong on the outskirts of the city. It was quite good actually. I, I was surprised because it's, it's, a, it's a city thing, so I thought every, everyone is connected, so you know, the speed would be a bit you know, slower, but it was quite good. Uh, it, it made a big difference, because usually I go to school to check my email and what's going on on Facebook or social media. 
but since I discovered the Wi-Fi, I just need to be somewhere in the streets. I don't really have to go to school. For my internet cafe, it's going to make a loss. And um, but for me myself, I I I love the internet. But yeah, I I, I it's going to make a big difference for me because I, I I love to stay connected on Facebook, Instagram, and I also download my slides on a, on a, using the Wi-Fi. I would like to see more like Wi-Fi routers, like everywhere you go, like in buses too, and you know, uh, robots, and everywhere. As Premier David Makura highlighted in his 2016 State of the Province Address, 30% of the government procurement will come from township businesses in order to develop previously neglected township economies. Budget will never be enough because there are a lot of competing priorities. We know that most of our budget goes to education, it's very important, it goes to health, it's very important, it goes to housing, it's very important. So what we need to do with the limited budget that we have, we need to use it as a coordination budget so that we coordinate and work with the private sector to attract more investment into the township economy. When we first uh, introduced the, 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 the policy uh, and strategy for the revitalization of the township economy, uh, some few years ago, um, even before I became uh, the premier, uh, it, it was the aim was to get uh, more township businesses uh, to take part and 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 and, and uh, take advantage of the opportunities uh, with regard to government procurement policy. But uh, we have now uh, actually uh, rebooted that. Uh, uh, because it's not we we don't only want to uh, support uh, the township enterprises through procurement. Our goal is to ensure that by 2030, the township economy is uh, at least 30 percent of Gauteng's GDP. Uh, currently, our GDP is uh, uh, the regional GDP is at 1.1 trillion rands. Uh, as part of other interventions, we want to increase the GDP of uh, the province and in there, we would like to see the participation uh, of uh, township enterprises, well, the whole idea of the township economy, uh, to grow to at least 30%. Uh, currently, our support for township entrepreneurs is only 12% of our, our, our budget with regard to goods and services. I separate uh, the 12% the is only for our procurement budget, but the totality of the economy. We would like to see the significant participation of township enterprises uh, in a measurable sense that township enterprises and the money that is in the township economy as we as we get township businesses to grow, as we get manufacturing activity to happen, as we get more innovation through our infrastructure investment uh, and, and other non-financial support. We would like to see many enterprises and, uh, growing in, in the townships because when they do so, uh, as the township enterprises, that money will be spent in the, in the townships to improve the infrastructure, to improve uh, people's residences to improve the, 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 the look and feel of the townships. The province's incubation hubs aim to foster radical growth of township economies, SMMEs and capacitate small businesses with the skills to be able to compete in the mainstream economy. Sheila Morubani is a seamstress who makes school clothes, tracksuits and wedding gowns. Alfred Meso is a panel beater. They've both benefited from these hubs. The challenge is that face it and before get a more happen. Next level is a go backyard room and conclude. And then next is not machine a enough, especially like machine were in products. Matata wa krele mo aramo se har verga panel piece. Ikor arna di propa tool da verga mero ko and then arko no is a mero ko ube propa. Alba ka kom singo arko no verga okra verga ka mo jarte mo elongoro. Livana Batala Mopila Toulouse. Why go out of Verga Gamato, who can engineer it and a Melea Ovala? Hapo into Sitzaga building because a workshop, a yavona, in a space 
mo hapong or na lidi sled bench or na le nitinya auto so it's easy into important thata ko hapong ko re hari patele rente and then hari patele le motlakase so bare bare file building bare ka mahala hari chaji we next because baba tla gore re grow so at least industrial is it file mo pela re na ta khona hore Rukau mereka lagi marayo, nah, dan rukau nor beli kelet, rukau nor kelet pilih. By future aku kau benda ke ke kau jile ke le business rumah ini, ke nali building ini ni aga, ke nali dimension ini ni aga, ke nali staff. Well, that's all we have time for for this month's episode of Eye on Kauteng. Until next month, we will delve further into economic development in the province. Until then, though, we appreciate your feedback and comments. You can tweet us at CNBC Africa using the hashtag Eye on Kauteng 410. From myself, Kukule Tutele, and the team, it's goodbye for now.